Pulse 95. Sharing success stories of the UAE. Make a cup of tea. This is Afternoon Karak with Abdul Karim. You're listening to Pulse 95. Hello and welcome back to the program. This is Afternoon Karak with myself, Abdul Karim Hanif, along with Aisha Al-Mazmi in the studios. Now, we've got a very special co-host and a guest on, on the show. It is Chef Badr Najib. Now, 23 years of age, grew up in the UAE, is a UAE national and has now become a culinary artist. Now, welcome onto the show, Badr. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on, on, on air with us on Afton Karak. Thank you very much. Right. The pleasure is now, mine. first question that I've always got to ask, and I've, I try to ask most of our guests, um, is, you know, you might be, you love the sweet things, you love uh, the culinary arts. How much do you like Chai Karak? I love Chai Karak. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I had this morning, basically. <laughs> nice. So I guess that answers it. Yes, that does answer because you've got to have a Chai Karak before you get onto the show and get energized for sure. Now, let's start talking about your career. Now, brother, you've got a very large Instagram following. You've been a part of a number of culinary um, events and competitions, but you studied to be an accountant. What happened? How did you choose this career path? Um, I think food was always mm. a part of my passion, honestly. Okay. Um, I've always wanted to become a chef. Okay. But then um, everyone told me it's better to have a proper degree, although I don't know what's wrong with the culinary <laughs> degree. But uh, um, I went towards a business mm. and I said, okay, the coolest or most creative thing I would go for would be in business that would be marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, my university, you study three years of general and then one year of specialization. Okay. So, I studied three years and then the fourth year they did not open marketing and then I was stuck with finance and accounting and basically one goal in life was to never study anything related to math so I studied and I become an actual accountant and I worked as an accountant as well. Wow okay so so where where did this develop from from being a passionate accountant to becoming you know, to 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 work on in the chef. Well, how how old were you when you decided? Look, you know, I really like baking. I like really like cooking. I like you know the skills in the kitchen. How did this all work? I think I loved uh, baking basically from back home. Mm-hmm. We always baked. Uh, Mom always baked, and that's where I fell in love with baking mm-hmm. and especially sweets. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I started learning more about it, um, checking it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, on Instagram, not well, not Instagram, on YouTube, and um, buying different books. So that was always like a treasure for me. Like when I would see a book, um, let's say, with a big cake on it, I would nice. always just want to buy it just to look at the pictures, <laughs> not to even like look at the recipes. Mm. So that's when it started. Now you've got a fan following of about ninety-two thousand uh, on on your Instagram page, and uh, Aisha Al Mazmi is one of them, and yes. she has been a passionate <laughs> fan. Uh, so I mean, I'm sure she'll have plenty of things to ask you. So how you know how how did you get this fame? How did this all work? Because there's lots of chefs out there. You know, they try, they want to be famous, but suddenly you've sprung up. Um, I would say my love towards. Um, how f- the food is presented mm. like i don't mm-hmm. look at food f- as just a dish on a plate i look at it as a story mm-hmm. i always uh, edit the foods we might say to basically fit a specific event mm-hmm. so when there's a certain event coming up i'm sure you would see on my instagram like there is every time something comes up let's say the national day mm-hmm. or let's say a specific um, any occasion the uae or outside i would make a dish out of it that would be of course in a video format that would kind of sing for itself yes because that's one of the reasons why i followed you at the beginning was because it's very aesthetically pleasing it's not just you know just a recipe just a normal recipe you show it in a way where it's very artistic and you see there is a vision which is very you don't see that back then like since i I followed you for a while now like maybe <laughs> Four years, five years. So since then, I see, like you had that vision, you had that artistic touch. Mm. So he deserves an applause, doesn't he? Oh yes, we've, 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 got, we've got to. We usually uh, give it off a <laughs> round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that. That, Thank you very that much. as well. Um, so I mean, that's that's very important. Now, how important do you uh, view uh, social media? In, in promoting what you do and uh, making sure that it's up there. So do you have a strategist behind it? Do you? How do you work and operate? I would say without social media, I wouldn't be where I am. Mm. Um, it definitely is the core of everything that I'm doing today. 
mm. whether um, I've collaborated with companies, whether I've attended events, uh, hosted workshops, um, gotten a scholarship. Yes. They're mm. all cores of social media. And I would say being persistent on it is always the way to go. Uh, basically, as soon as you stop posting, people stop uh, watching, they get bored. Like even this week, I have an event coming up and I've just been running around and not posting anything. And you just see, boop, the, event, the followers go down. Mm. So they always want to see what you're doing. They always um, like to have at least a post a day, which is a bit hard to do. But we try our best. Well, we'll certainly do try our best to keep uh, everyone posted, and well, we we try our best to keep our uh, you know adverts going as well on the on the on the radio station. So we'll take a bit of a short break, and uh, when we come back, we're looking forward to even more discussion on this because one question that pops up in my mind is: Have you made an error in uh, whilst baking? And what was the biggest mistake you've ever made <laughs> with the Ooh, oven? The right? hard questions, yeah. <laughs> the karak <laughs> questions, they're always there. So stay. Stay tuned to the Afternoon Karak Show. Pulse 95. Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Abdul Karim on Pulse 95. Hello and welcome back to Afternoon Karak with myself, Aisha Al-Mazmi and Abdul Karim. And today we have a special guest with us, Chef B or Chef Badr Najib, who is an Emirati chef and is an all around amazing person. I wanted to ask you something. It's going to jump right in mm-hmm. because lately you got a scholarship at the Swiss Academy for Culinary Arts. Did I get it right? Yes, but it's like a puzzle. You just <laughs> yes, I switched them around, didn't I? So I wanted to know how does it feel being there, representing the UAE as an Emirati? I think you're the only Emirati there, aren't you? Or at the moment, yes. At the moment, yes. Can you tell us all about your experience? Um, it's unbelievable when you get a call from Switzerland saying that would you be interested in being at our school mm, which bet. is uh, the Culinary Arts Academy Switzerland mm-hmm. in Lucerne um, it's amazing like just to give you a mini fact that to show you how amazing is it mm. um, the ambassador of the entire school is actually Chef Anton uh, Mossiman which is the main caterer of the royal family wow. basically feeds the queen <laughs> wow so it's it's definitely one of the top um, chocolate schools out there and mm-hmm. if you want to learn all about chocolate mainly mm-hmm. where better to go than switzerland mm-hmm. and it's quite amazing because you meet different cultures different people um they offer different programs like international cuisines um european cuisines they offer diplomas just like what i'm doing which i'm currently studying to get a grand diploma in Swiss chocolate work and sugar art. Mm -hmm. I never knew such a title existed. (laughs) Exactly. Like when you posted that video and he said Swiss chocolate and sugar arts, right? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that is very specific. Mm -hmm. Like you think maybe as you become a, to study chocolate and become a chocolatier, but Swiss chocolate and sugar art. Only the best. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I bet. Yes. Can you tell us also more about that? Like why, why is it? so specific what is different about you know other chocolate what is it all about um i would say first of all to just differentiate between let's say desserts or pastry in general rather Mm -hmm. than like grand chocolate diploma Mm -hmm. so in pastry you would learn everything you would learn from breads to pastries to let's say eclairs cupcakes cakes in total when it comes to a chocolate diploma it comes or it revolves around everything that is about chocolate. So you mm-hmm. basically st- literally start from looking at a cocoa bean, which is what chocolate oh, is made wow. from. Mm-hmm. And then they show us how chocolate is actually made. We go to the factories um, because like one of the, some of the main factories of the uh, suppliers of chocolate are in Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, so basically, um, I would say it is so focused into chocolate and my love for chocolate is unbelievable. And when I always work at home, chocolate is one of the main things that I fail in. I was like, okay, you're going to give me a tough time. I'm going to become the boss of you. So So if you can't beat them, join them. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Well, I've got a question for you now. I always like to bring in cut up questions on the show and uh, I'm going to bring the tension up now. So (laughs) what was the most difficult uh, dessert you had to make and how much time did it take you? most difficult dessert mm. I wouldn't say any dessert is difficult as long oh, okay. as you 
Not because of me, I would say anyone <laughs> in life, like as long as you do it several times. Mm. Regarding myself, I hated making macaroons. Okay. Because they never worked, they always cracked, uh, they always stuck to the sheet. Mm-hmm. But then I actually learned how to do it in the university itself. Oh, so really? So if you can beat them, join them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, that was one of the hardest things. Although many people can mm-hmm. make it in a blink of an eye. But for me, that was the hardest thing. Wow. wow. Even though um, mm-hmm. you said that um, during, I think it was your final, was it your final project? Mm-hmm. That had macarons in it, didn't it? Yeah. Can you tell me more about that? Like the, it's called Lumi. Yes. Was it the Lumi project? The Lumi was my project. Lumi, yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, we had to do a whole um, project for the final exam. Mm-hmm. And you choose a theme and you decorate your table mm-hmm. and you incorporate different ingredients and your main idea mm-hmm. into the specifications that they give you. For example, they need um, a specific entremet with uh, this size and with this many slices. Mm-hmm. One slice uh, cut out, the slice should be on this type of plate. So it's quite specified and you actually go crazy. But I still wanted to bring something from our culture into... Mm-hmm the whole idea of um, the project because many people did like tropical themes and um, summer themes and winter themes but for me that's too abroad for me I always Mm -hmm. like to complicate things for some reason Uh, but then I thought um, there was this puree that they had which is which puree is kind of like let's say a juice of uh, a certain fruit Mm -hmm. they had uh, lime which reminded me of Lumi Mm -hmm. and I was always homesick so I was like Lumi this is gonna be interesting and it always reminds me of my grandma's house uh, when we always squeeze it on food and so on. Mm. And then I was like, okay, how to incorporate that into desserts? And then I came up with different um, desserts and aspects and incorporated the whole lumi or lime into the idea. Can you f- tell people, because I'm pretty sure Abdul Kerry doesn't know what lumi is. Mm, no, Do this you? is the question that I was going to ask you. you know, for, for <laughs> Emirati desserts, <laughs> for people to understand them. And, you know, as you said, you're homesick because a lot of people would know of uh, uh, Um Ali, mm-hmm. uh, but they wouldn't know of many, many of the desserts and the variety that uh, this country has to offer. So mm-hmm. if you could outline them and say, which one would you recommend uh, them to make and try? Uh, so lumi in general is not a dessert. So okay. it's actually an ingredient. So oh, it okay. basically means lime mm-hmm. or lumi aswad, which would be dried black lime. So okay. Basically, if you just put lime in the sun, it would dry out and then you would use it as a spice. Oh, okay. So it's kind of like a fruit or a spice. So it's an ingredient, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's well known here and we grow it in the UAE. Okay. Uh, so it is basically an ingredient. Right. So yeah. for Emirati uh, dessert items, let's say, for example. Well, not omeli because I don't think that is Emirati. No, no it's, <laughs> it's not. not. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's, that's a misconception. And mm. what I love it's about... It's Middle Eastern. Yeah. It's Middle Eastern. And not a lot of people know about like GCC. <laughs> besides the <Kimat. laughs> Nobody knows enough about GCC um, food, whether it's dessert or yeah. savory food. And usually what I've seen Badad uh, do, usually he would incorporate like um, Emirati themes, Emirati ingredients went to like a modern mm. kind of aspect. Mm. That's his, I was, um, okay. his, well, a lot of his recipes go around. So yeah, he does bring in the Emirati element, which is um, very unique and very great because again, you're putting the UAE on the mm. map. You're telling people, hey, we have food too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But well, I think back to your question, if mm. you would say an Emirati dessert, I would say try Bithith, okay. try Sago, um, now, how to explain it to you? <laughs> Sago would be quite hard to explain it to you. <laughs> but the teeth is uh, basically made with, obviously, sugar, um, dates, mm-hmm. different green. We basically have dates and everything. Yes. Um, cardamom. Um, it has a very weird texture, but okay. that's what makes it unique to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's pronounce it again. But teeth. Yes. Okay, that's something that we'll be putting up on Afternoon Karak for sure and discussing a little bit more in detail. We'll take a bit of a short break because we've got your business headlines lined up for you and then after that we'll continue this conversation with Badr and Najib about all things culinary arts and baking. Stay tuned to Pulse95. Pulse95. Make a hot cuppa and relax. It's Afternoon Karak with Abdul Karim on Pulse95. Hello and welcome back to the program. Yes, you tuned into Afternoon Karak and we've got Badr Najib in the studios and we're talking all things culinary arts and uh, talking all things working with chocolate and baking because he is currently uh, on a break from his uh, course which is taking place in Switzerland and he's also earned a scholarship for it. It's now a proud moment for the country to have an Emirati and currently only Emirati in that course in the university specifically. Now, we usually like to ask Karak questions 
on, on, on our show, and which means strong questions, difficult questions. And I've got one question lined up for you. Now, uh, throughout the Arab region, and I'd say maybe in South a- South Asian region, maybe around the world, we're all scared of Baba, you know, our fathers. You know, how did you convince him to say, Baba, I want to continue a career in culinary arts. Was he was he was he okay with it? Was he did he take it lightly? Because of all of the food stuff that go <laughs> in my mind when he said Baba, I first thought of like Baba tea. <laughs> and like the Baba I was like what <laughs> that? what does that have to yeah. do with it? But yeah, that was fine with it. Okay. I think well not back then, not when, yeah, when I he wanted first started, to yeah. go from school okay. to mm-hmm. to become a chef, they were all like, No, we're like, oh, are you joking? <laughs> but then after I did my university and I got my degree and then yeah. Instagram took off and it was oh, great okay. and collaborations happened and so on. Um, I think, yeah, they were like, okay. Ahead, they trusted you. you. They're okay. like, okay, he, he actually knows what he's doing. Although I think yeah. he still prefers if I work <laughs> as an accountant, but he knows I'm enjoying it and that's what matters to them. Very nice. Well, and Aisha threw a very cut a question uh, bef- during the break as well. Yes, we were interrogating him yes. basically. Because <laughs> I wanted, we, oh, well, Abdul Karim asked you at the beginning, what's your favorite like dessert? And you said that's too difficult. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to make it easier. We said <laughs> top five flavors you would like using often okay i would say i would not say ingredients i would say i'll take it more abroad so go ahead more broad, like more <laughs> broad sorry um like if i would order let's say a dessert at the restaurant i would first always go for fruity mm. citrusy um like yuzu um lime passion fruit and so on that's mm. always what i would go for mm-hmm. So that would be top. And then I love uh, chocolate, of course. Of course you Comes do. <laughs> second. Well, first and second kind of um, custard. I love custard. If you ever are planning on getting me a birthday cake, please get a me a cus- vanilla custard cake. Vanilla custard. <laughs> Not chocolate custard. No. Vanilla custard. No, the no. original. The best. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say that's top three mainly. Mm. And everything else can just... Everything else is just at the yeah. end. <laughs> Wow. Well, let's ask you another question. I've, I've just uh, thought of it as well. Now, in terms of uh, recommending your, not even recommending, there's another question I've got in mind. What was your biggest error, the biggest <laughs> mistake that you've made in the uh, in the kitchens? I think you've seen it. Um, it was in Switzerland. Honestly. Okay. And basically what happens is that alongside your studies, you get assigned to two things. One is a service and okay. one is a la carte. Okay. So when it comes to service, because the buffet that is in the university, which is quite cool, there is no catering company doing it. Mm-hmm. So the students get assigned to actually cook for all of the students on campus for the whole buffet. Mm-hmm. So you get a taste of how a buffet is like. So that's one. For example, unfortunately, I got assigned always to breakfast service. We always had to be in the kitchen at five in the morning. Um, but then there's a la carte. So a la carte week is every pair gets... Uh, let's say a specific meal I got lunch mm-hmm. where you have to make an a la carte dessert for the fine dining aspect oh, of okay. the of the campus so there is the normal buffet and then there is a fine dining so you come up with a dessert and you present it to the chef and so on mm. so basically of course once again I wanted to add our touches so mm. I thought of like a poached pear saffron uh, let's say goodness mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and it was a very long day because we had classes in the morning and then we had the, the normal practical classes and then after that, we went to actually prepare me and my teammate for the um, a la carte menu. So we poached all of the pears, peeled them, cooked them. They're all ready, boxed them up. Everything was ready. The cream, the glaze, the ice cream, everything. And then end of the day, I think it was like 8 p.m. if I'm not wrong, after like working for 12 mm-hmm. hours, I think, in the kitchen for the entire day. So I was taking the box that was filled with all of the pears and it just slipped from my hand like I was holding the lid Ooh. and then the bottom part just fell on the floor oh, and the wow. picture is actually on my Instagram it's just like a beautiful floor <laughs> covered in yellow uh, pears and it literally just fell there and uh, and we were both just silent I didn't look at her she didn't look at me my partner <laughs> I just stayed, I just stared mm. at the floor and all I was thinking about thinking about was like how many more hours are we gonna be here <laughs> and I literally I just she stayed silent and I went behind the counter and I just sat on the floor I literally sat there for like two minutes, silence, and it was so silent, like you could hear a pin drop. Uh, and I was like, okay, I think wow. this is something to learn from. So we got up, we called our friends, mm-hmm. whoever's free, just come around, help us. And then we actually redid the whole thing in 
one hour and a half, which was well, quite cool. Okay. Now, one big aspect that I've heard just now is that Bother Najib, he supplies it to some restaurants, and you don't have your own restaurant yet, but your Kinder Spread gets the big momentum, gets people yeah. talking. Tell us about this Kinder Spread and how did the, 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 this all start and what makes it so famous? So basically, many people always ask me, yeah. why don't you open a business? Because I always post recipes for other people to open businesses. Uh, but when it comes to myself, I always, when I want to sell something, I want to sell something that you cannot find anywhere in the market. Um, something that's quite different. Something that I would believe in so much that I would say, okay, I want this sold as a product. And so far, in all of these years, for me, the Kinder Spread has been the main aspect. And it's basically, if you can think of any spread, let's say peanut butter or chocolate spread, mm -hmm. but this basically tastes like Kinder. Um... And basically, I remember I once made it and the Kinder Spread was actually supposed to be a recipe on Instagram. Oh. Until I tasted it and I was like, hmm. Let's save it. <laughs> Let's save it and then check. And then I actually gave it to all of my friends and family and I was like, what do you think? Everyone was like, wow. And then I started working on the branding and the logo and so on. Even my cousin made me the logo, which I love so much. Um, and basically, from there, I decided to make it like a limited edition thing. So there never is a date. There never is a schedule. Suddenly, out of nowhere, I pop and I say, hello, tomorrow I'm going to be selling the Kinder Spread. And then I used to always sell it through WhatsApp and then people reserve and then they come to my house and pick it up. And then I started making events because of the big demand. I decided mm -hmm. to make different events where people, I would say like, I'm going to be supplying the Kinder Spread, let's say at 6 p.m. And 6 p.m. means 6 p.m. So if you come at 5.59, I actually never sell it mm. because people come early and they stand in line. So for me, it's not fair until the time actually starts. Um, and it's quite nice. Alhamdulillah, yani, when we sell big big quantities we literally set out within 15 minutes uh, and it's it's a fun thing okay. so how much does one cost i'll reserve one for myself it's <laughs> 150 millis uh for 25 dirhams oh i was gonna say he's 150 dirham for that <laughs> cake oh my god <laughs> just so that you know the size <laughs> yeah so, okay yeah that's amazing mm -hmm. okay Thanks. so um so you you just never wanted to do business what's what's coming up next for you are you going to eventually open a business a shop a restaurant a cafe like, I don't know if Karak it's going to be a restaurant. I don't know if it's a <laughs> shop. <laughs> I'll leave that to the masters. Uh, but I would say either a restaurant or a cafe or an academy. I'm not really sure. Oh, Ooh, an academy. But for me, when I think about it, I would say at least I want to work in my own cafe and mm. then gain like several years of experiences and mm -hmm. then go and actually teach okay. in an academy. So, but I, I love teaching people and that's why I always post recipes outside so I would say mm. that would be in the and I'm one line. of I, we spoke uh, off air that I'm <laughs> one of those people <laughs> is I've been using your churros recipe yes. for a while now and it's honestly it's it's a win it's a winner everybody loves that it that makes me so happy <laughs> yeah. okay now I've got to this, ask you this question a lot of people on our social media team like to ask uh, the heart to heart questions so what does working with chocolate and working with dessert or making these desserts or being a culinary artist mean to you personally if you were to give me a quick crisp sound bite what would it be i would say to me it means sharing a heart loving moment um when wherever you go the one thing you're going to talk about and the one thing that stays at the end and they always say save the best for last is dessert and that's what you're always going to talk about Mm. chocolate touches the heart it doesn't touch the heart sorry. it touches the soul mm. <laughs> and to me that is like life changing like when you give someone flowers or you give them a box of chocolate like, mm. I would prefer chocolate honestly <laughs> both together that's fine as well chocolate cake for Even example better. chocolate cake chocolate yeah. brownies like mm. the, the touches like let's say the handmade stuff always add mm. extra value to it wow so definitely. incredible I wanted to ask also what do you want because you said that it took a lot of courage to obviously go through go towards culinary arts instead of you know something more stable like we're gonna say stable so what do you want to tell those people who are listening to you whether they are 15 16 or even like 40 50 60 who are thinking about going into the culinary arts um it, it's always good to have a backup plan and my backup plan is basically my accounting uh, degree mm -hmm. so if you're still too scared to like touch the waters and feel how it is always have a backup plan that's mm -hmm. always a good idea but if it's not making you happy just go for it i quit my job i was working as a job as an accountant and that was not for me mm -hmm. um will i ever go back to it it wasn't extremely horrible if i ever needed let's say to fund my restaurant for example <laughs> i'm gonna go back to a job for example 
but uh, I quit my job and to me that was one of the best days ever honestly not to quit but to actually know that I'm going towards something that I really love to do and waking up at 5 in the morning to enter the kitchen waking up at that time has never been easier honestly wow mashallah Wow. I'm honest honestly as an Emirati like mm. I'm very proud oh, wow. to see these kind of passions especially people who take on their passions and go ahead with they run with it towards you know Thank towards you. the sun <laughs> and honestly I'm very proud of you and I'm pretty sure everybody is also very proud of you mashallah for what you're doing as an much. Emirati as a <laughs> he deserves it he's ever very yeah. long a uh, round of applause. So well done, and we wish you all the best, honestly. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll play Thank with that. You. Yes. Um, one final question that I've got to ask, and this is what I try to ask off air as well. A lot of people who work in dessert and culinary arts, such as yourself, a lot of people know that you've got to be careful about your diet, about your physique. So why aren't you slightly larger? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, that's mean. <laughs> um, so candid. <laughs> um, I never, I don't know if you heard of this, where they say never trust a thin chef. Yeah, I do, <laughs> I do not agree. I do not agree. Okay. Because, okay, they say that that means that the person is not eating and so on. No, mm. the fact that I've been in the kitchen and I've actually studied uh, in Switzerland, <laughs> the amount of, hours that you're going to be standing in a kitchen because chairs are actually not allowed in a kitchen oh. Oh. you're actually mm-hmm. always standing you never mm-hmm. find a chair and if you have a f- if there's a box and you lean on it <laughs> the, the chef is going to be quite <laughs> pissed at you so i would say you're standing for long hours you're mm-hmm. working for long hours and you're always stressed but in a good way um you're running around so i don't see why you should actually get larger <laughs> it, yeah. it helps you stay fit i actually lost so much weight when i went to switzerland wow so maybe yeah. you should go into the culinary arts at the kitchen. yeah instead of working spending how many right. hours in you're, the gym you're yeah. s- you're sitting all day on a yeah. chair yeah in the studio <laughs> two exactly. shows <laughs> <laughs> for sure now brother it was a pleasure to have you in the studios and we'll definitely be bringing you back more uh, after you return from your uh, course and good luck all the very best with the with Thank the with the dreams and pursuing mm-hmm. it you've been a role model for for us over here for sure and for most of our listeners and uh, that's why the text lines have been quite busy as well so thank you for joining us brother and uh, we look forward to seeing you soon and maybe serving us up some more um, dessert when we come to your events (laughs) yes (laughs) so reserving that kinder kinder wrap for sure Uh, we're looking forward to that thank you uh, once again and this was After in Karak so stay tuned to Pulse 95 Gold we've got plenty of conversations lined up for you right here on Pulse 95 Pulse 95. 95. It's Afternoon Karak with Abdul Karim. Highlighting sports, business, careers, and sharing success stories of the UAE. Pulse 95.